next we're going to uh, welcome our keynote speaker, Tom Mueller. Uh, Tom is uh, considered one of the uh, world's foremost spacecraft propulsion experts. He has over 30 years of propulsion development experience at TRW, SpaceX, and now Impulse Space. At, at T, TRW, he led development of the TR-105 liquid rocket engine. He'll have to explain what that means. As one of SpaceX's founding members, he led the development of propulsion systems for the Falcon uh, 1 uh, and Falcon Heavy and Starship launch vehicles, as well as the Dragon line of spacecraft. He played a critical role in the development of the company's re renewable, reusable rocket technology, which has dramatically reduced the cost of launching payloads into space. Now, as founder and CEO of Impulse Sp Space, he continues to the development of new propulsion and power systems that will provide world-class in-space transportation capabilities. Tom is building Impulse with the same engineering philosophy he created at SpaceX by focusing on low-cost, reliable systems realized through elegant engineering that does not follow convention. His ultimate vision for Impulse is to be the leading, leading in space transportation infrastructure that will accelerate the expansion of the overall space economy and help expand the human frontier into the stars. So today, Tom joins us by Zoom. Uh, good morning, Tom. Good morning. Welcome to the Age of Agility. <laughs> Thank you, it's great to be here. And good morning to everybody. <coughs> Um, I'm going to talk about um, how I'm going to share my screen and, and do a little presentation and talk about how I went basically from a logger to a to a rocket engineer. Um, can everybody see that? Yes, I think we can, Tom. Okay, great. So a little bit about me. Um, I grew up in St. Mary's, Idaho. Uh, got my bachelor's degree from the University of Idaho in 1985. Uh, moved to California and started my, my career um, while down there in here in California. I, I, I got my master's degree from Loyola Marymount in 92. I started out as an engineer at Hughes Aircraft in 85, but quickly moved to TRW and became a rocket development engineer and have spent 15 uh, years there before I met Elon Musk and we started SpaceX in 2002. I was at SpaceX for 18 and a half years, and then I left and, and uh, started Impulse Space in, in July 21. So I'm, I'm the founder and CEO of Impulse Space. I'm, I'm gonna talk about all these things, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk about them with, um, with, with kind of education in mind and how education helped help me. Um, I, I felt like I, I, I almost like would have fell through the cracks if it wasn't for a teacher that, um, that, that, that helped me get on the right path and, and, and achieve my, my goals. So as I mentioned, I was born in St. Mary's, Idaho, up here, um, up, up in northern uh, Idaho in a beautiful little valley with a, the gorgeous St. Joe River, um, a, a logging community, same size as the day I was born. It, was, it had 2,600 people in 1961 when I was born, and it has 2,600 people today. So it's a, just a small, uh, beautiful town that, that uh, hasn't changed too much. I have two brothers and a sister. My father drove that that logging truck you can see up there in the corner. Uh, he had two trucks during his during his truck driving career, uh, and they were both orange. So his his son call was or his his, his radio sign was sun kissed on the radio. So orange is kind of a special special color to my family. That's uh, that picture on the lower left is my uh, my grandfather and his twin brother uh, Clarence. My grandfather and and Walter, his twin brother, and then his uh, older and younger brother, who had Mueller Brothers logging back in the I think it was like in the 30s and 40s and 50s. Um, so uh, you know, just logging was was uh, what my family was uh, you know started when they homesteaded there. And my my dad was a logger, and both my brothers have been loggers at different times. And I put myself through through uh, college uh, sawing during the, the summers. 
but I was um I was pretty different than the rest of my family. I was somehow interested in science. Uh, my my uncle gave gave me his chemistry set when I was very young, and you know it was like a 1960s uh, chemistry set, and they they had some stuff in they had some chemicals in it you probably wouldn't have today. So I had fun playing with the chemistry set. Um, I I flew these model rockets. You can see on that lower picture there um, some of those rockets I actually. Um, built from scratch, uh, some I bought as kits and flew those in my grandfather's field. Um, I was really interested in uh, heat engines. So I had, you can see that steam engine right there that I got when I was about 12 years old for Christmas. I still have that. It's a little little steam engine that you can burn fuel and, and run. And I, I just fascinated by engines really of all kinds. Um, I, I took apart uh, the the engine on, on our lawn, lawnmower. I, I, I mowed lawns, I mowed up my, my dad's lawn and I, uh, I mowed my, my grandmother's lawn and, and some of the neighbor's lawns. So I felt like the, the lawnmower was getting tired. So I took it all apart. My dad came home from work and saw all the pieces laying out and, and thought, oh, oh no, I'm gonna have to get a new lawnmower. But I, I put it back together and it ran just fine. So, you know, I, I, I kind of had the knack for engines from, from an early, uh, early stage. Um, but what I want to really talk about was my, when I got into high school, I took a math class. Uh, I was I was mostly taking like welding and uh, you know very vocational uh, thing uh, uh, like a machine shop class, uh, auto mechanics, things like that. I was just you know having worked with, around the logging trucks with my dad and stuff. That was what I was drawn to, uh, you know, very mechanically inclined. But I took a math class for some reason and I found out I was actually one of the top students uh, in the class. In fact, um, on aptitude tests, I was I was second in my high school in, in math scores, and my teacher, my math teacher, Mr. Hines, said to me, he said, hey, you're really good at math. You're going to be a, you're going to be an engineer, right? And I didn't even know what an engineer was, to tell you the truth. I said, no, I'm going to be an aircraft mechanic. And he said, do you want to be the guy that fixes the plane or the guy that designs the plane? He said, you need to, you need to start taking some math classes and become an engineer so you can design plane. plane. So he put me on the path that, um, that, that that led me to you know become a, a rocket engineer and and achieve the things that that I would have never have done if it hadn't been him uh, just just recognizing that my potential that that I didn't know that I had. I also had some really awesome uh, other teachers. We had um, uh, Mr. Samuel Samuel Cummings back at the time who was the Idaho Science Teacher of the Year. I think elected several times. Really good. Uh, science teacher, I had him for advanced biology, and he talked me into doing science fair. And the second year I did it, I won uh, some I, I, I won some prizes originally and went to the International Science Fair down here in Anaheim, California. My first first trip out of state, first time on an airplane, really cool experience. Um, I I think I got like a a second up in Spokane in the regionals and didn't win anything down here, but but it was really. Um, it was really a, a great educational opportunity for me and kind of opened my eyes up to what's, you know, what's possible in, in the world of science. Going on about college education. So clearly, um, you know, University of Idaho is 70 miles away from my hometown, has an awesome engineering program. There was really no debate about which school I was going to go to. Um, and really, there were, I think from, from as soon as I started on the college track, I I just gravitated towards mechanical engineering. It just seemed like the right thing for me. And I, I still feel like I was lucky that was the, the right choice for me. Um, so I, I, you can see that picture of me um, next to a big uh, white pine tree. I, I was a logger uh, during the summers, working hard, making money to pay for, my, for myself through school. My dad, um, my dad instilled in me a work ethic uh, you can have a car, you're paying for it. That, that's my, my car, the little, the little Triumph Spitfire there. Um, that's when I was getting ready to move to California when I graduated in, in 1985. Um, pay for that car, pay for the gas, insurance, everything. Paid for my college uh, education. I did um, have that car after Mount St. Helens, the ash destroyed the engine in that car. And I didn't have the money to rebuild it. So my dad did pay for the rebuilding of that car. But I think that was about the only time I can remember uh, getting bailed out. Um, I was pretty much self uh, self sufficient and had good work ethic from you know just from my upbringing from my 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 mom and my dad. Um, so I moved to California '85 uh, and 
really, I didn't have a great resume. My, my GPA wasn't that great and I had no work experience other than logging. So it was kind of a scary summer because I, I was sending my resume er everywhere and not getting a call. Um, and I finally went to a job fair and I talked to a bunch of different people and I got three job interviews and out of those three interviews, I got three job offers. So I think they recognize, uh, you know, just the, the spark I had, um, even though my resume wasn't that great. So I ended up, uh, uh, starting at Hughes aircraft, um, in 19, in, in late 1985 as my first job in, in, in engineering. So working, working on mechanical engineer on, on, on the spacecraft. So pretty cool job, but I really wanted to work on rockets. I think as soon as I was in college and started to learn um, the mechanical engineering curriculum, I, I, I just started to understand how a liquid rocket engine worked. You know, once I took fluids and uh, combustion and, you know, chemistry, and I really had a, had a very strong interest in, in liquid rocket engines. So when I moved to California, I, went, I wanted to work on rocket engines. And when I found out that TRW, which is just, you know, in, in the same area as Hughes Aircraft, uh, had a rocket engine program, I got my resume over there and I got a job at TRW and started out there as a rocket development engineer. And that's basically started my, my rocket engineering uh, career. And as soon as I met, uh, you know, those rocket engineers at TRW, I realized these guys are super smart. Uh, I need more education to, to catch up. So I got uh, LMU was the closest local college back then. We really didn't have the, the internet, so you couldn't do classes online. So I, I went to LMU um, at night, a uh, couple couple nights a week to to slowly get my my master's degree. And I was also at about the same time, which is my next slide. I got interested in, in amateur rocketry, liquid rocketry. So I actually um, did a, a rocket project, which I'll talk about uh, for my master's thesis. Um, and then I did get my master's thesis in, in 92. And, and that the education that I got both at both at, uh, throughout my my K, my K through 12 in St. Mary's, Idaho, I think was pretty awesome. It's like. I don't know if the if the if the teachers were that great there, or if you just remember the good teachers, but I can remember uh, like my sixth grade, Mrs. White, how great she was. My fifth grade math teacher who had us launch rockets. We'd walk up to a field, uh, you know, near near the high school or near, near the grade school and and launch uh, Estes rockets, which was, you know, which was great. I was already doing it at the time. So it was just like uh, more, more rocket activity for me. So it was all through um, through my Idaho education in, in, in grade school, high school. I felt like we had great teachers. Um, and then even University of Idaho, some great professors. Uh, I, yeah, I did. I just learned so much and all of it. Uh, the great thing about it, everything you learn is applicable in mechanical engineering and in STEM is applicable to liquid rocket engines. So early career, like I said, I started at Hughes Aircraft, went to TRW and at, at TRW, um, I did development my whole time. So I, I did anything from the center, those little, those little tiny hydrazine thrusters, little five pounders to the um the, the tr-105 that uh that you asked me andy to, to explain that that big rocket engine there in this in the lower center at 650,000 pound thrust engine that would be the main propulsion for the delta four uh rocket we didn't actually win that project but we developed that engine for for the delta four so that was the biggest engine i ever worked on um and then uh to the left of that a 40,000 pound engine that that burned liquid oxygen and kerosene which Basically, was was where I learned how to offer, how how to use those propellants, which is what the Falcon Nine uh, SpaceX uh, rocket uses. So, really, um, I learned a lot when in the, those fifteen years at TRW, mainly because I never got on a flight program. I was just doing a lot of NASA and Air Force uh, development. So, I got I got to, to learn every type of rocket engine, every type of propellant, every size rocket engine. So, it was it was a pretty good education uh, through my career there at TRW. At the same time, not getting enough rockets at work. Um, I, in 1990, I joined the Reaction Research Society, uh, the, the oldest existing amateur rocket society in the US. And my first rocket that I developed was that one there on the lower left with the, with the flames painted on it. It was a 50 pound thrust uh, liquid oxygen and kerosene uh, engine that I, that I flew in that airframe. We think that that is the smallest uh, cryogenic liquid oxygen rocket ever flown. 
Um, even the the one that was uh, first flown flown by Goddard, uh, his, his liquid oxygen gasoline uh, rocket, you know, back in uh, I think when was that the nineteen late twenties was uh, was a seventy pound thrust uh, engine. So this is even smaller. But I, I de developed everything from a little twenty five pounder up to a thirteen thousand pound thrust engine, and uh, was involved in this project that you can see there in the top center, uh, a project that we, we used a solid rocket to launch. Uh, a payload to, to 50 miles. The first, we think the first amateur payload to ever go uh, above 50 miles in 1996. Unfortunately, we didn't have the Guinness World uh, Record guys out there, so we didn't, weren't able to claim it. But uh, we all know that we that we went that high. So it's a pretty pretty cool project uh, early early on in, in the uh, amateur rocket days. Okay. So it was actually through the amateur rocket club that I got introduced to this this internet millionaire. Uh, who, who was, uh, you know, one of the founders of PayPal that wanted to, I'm sorry, was there a question? Okay, no. we're good. Yep. Hope it works. Um, anyway, there, there was a, this internet millionaire that wanted to come see this 13,000 pound engine that, that me and my friend um, John Garvey were working on. So uh, I didn't really care if the guy came and, and, and saw what we're doing. But anyway, so Elon comes walking in and says, what is that you got there? And it's like, well, it's a 13,000 pound thrust rocket engine. He goes, is that big? And I go, well, I think it's the biggest amateur liquid rocket ever built. Have you ever worked on anything bigger? Uh, yeah, I worked on 650,000 pound thrust engine for TRW. Could you build that? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I think I know, I, I know how that engine works. Yeah, I could probably build that. How much would that cost? That was, that was how fast it escalated with Elon. So we started talking um, about doing a launch vehicle company, and uh, he convinced me and a few others to join. And in May of 2002, I, I left TRW, and we started uh, this little company, which became SpaceX. And our first building there in that lower picture was in El Segundo, where um, I actually own a building and where I started Impulse. Um, and, and we've now moved to Redondo Beach, but we started out also in, in, in the same city. So I was, um, you know, 18 and a half years at SpaceX. I led the development of the Merlin rocket engine, which uh, powers the, the Falcon 9 launch vehicle, the most reliable launch vehicle ever. It's flown 200 times without failure. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's so therefore the, the, the Merlin engine is the most reliable booster engine in history. I also designed the engines, the Draco engine. I actually have this one right behind me as a Draco engine. Uh, that was used on that is used on the the Dragon uh, space capsule that takes people to the International Station or International Space Station. Um, I also hired and developed the team that developed the Raptor rocket engine that's used on Starship um, that that j just launched and spectacularly exploded here a little while ago, uh, a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't directly involved in the development of that engine. Early versions I was, but the one that they currently have, but the guys that, that I basically trained and hired uh, developed that engine. I was mostly at the time uh, working on sizing, this, the, the initial sizing of the Starship. Elon asked me uh, as, as I became propulsion CTO, he said, what would it take to take a hundred tons of payload to the surface of Mars? And I sized the initial sizing of the, of, of the, the starship and then he said what would it take to bring it back from mars so i started working on how how much power it would, it would take and where we would get it to bring to make a thousand tons of propellant to bring starship back from mars i also at the time um worked on this the elect i, I selected the uh, hall thruster system that was used um on the starlinks the the there's over three thousand uh, almost four thousand of those satellites now so the v by far the the most um uh, deployed propulsion system, satellite propulsion system in history. I, I specified that and hired the people to develop that. Um, but then I left uh, in, in 2020. I, I had done enough at, at SpaceX. I wanted to go do my own thing. So I started uh, Impulse Space. Uh, in 2021, uh, we founded Impulse, um, raised $30 million in seed funding with, um, with uh, Lux and Founders Fund, and announced very within months of, of founding the company, we um, signed a deal with Relativity to do a Mars mission to land to be the first 
a private company to land on Mars. So pretty audacious um, mission that we signed very early on. And we, we just announced our first mission to LEO, which we're doing in October. We're building that spacecraft right now. I'll show you some pictures of it. We have, uh, I think, about 75 full-time employees now in our new headquarters in Redondo Beach, California, which is about two blocks away from uh, the old TRW uh, campus where I was at for 15 years, now north of Grumman. So here's what, here's what Impulse does. Uh, SpaceX was kind of the... the the stepping stone to get to where the market really is, which is space. With, with these reusable launch vehicles coming online like Starship and Terran R, there's gonna be a lot of payloads going to space. And the, the, the big rockets that go to space are kind of like the kind of like the cargo ship coming into port. They, they, they go to a certain orbit, but there's a lot of cargo on them that needs to go to all these different orbits. And we're gonna be basic, basically um, like, like the, like the, the semi, trailer to take these 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 cargos where they really want to go. That's called last mi mile delivery. Some of these things want to re-enter again after they've done their thing in space. We can do that. We can re we can reposition things in space or remove debris. We can deliver to much higher energy orbits from from low earth orbit. Low earth orbits like 300 kilometers, we can take it up to 36,000 kilometers, which is a geosynchronous orbit. And then of course we're doing the Mars lander and we bid on some lunar lander stuff. So anything that needs to be around in space we want to do it. This is our first spacecraft called Mira. It's this is it on a shaker table doing a, a structural vibe test, and it passed with flying colors. So it's we're getting ready to launch the serial number two version of this. Is our flight vehicle that, that we're building up right now that's going to launch on a Falcon Nine uh, launch coming up here in October. It's going to be pretty cool that um, going up on. A, engines that I designed will be this spacecraft that also has a propulsion system that, that I did the initial development of. So uh, it's kind of like full circle um, from, from providing the launch vehicle to now providing the payload. This is the, the little engines that we've developed, the safe, a little five pounder, uh, makes five pounds of thrust uh, in space. There's gonna be, there's eight of those on, on that Mira spacecraft. And then the Rigel down on the, on the lower right is a 180 pound thrust engine. That's what we use on the, the Mars lander, four of those to land on Mars. I want to show a video here, if I can get it to play, of, of this mission that we're doing uh, with relativity to, to, to take uh, a spacecraft to Mars. So that's the Terran R launch vehicle that Relativity provides. And they're giving us the, the free launch basically up to a Mars trajectory. And then this is our spacecraft that separates from the launch vehicle. It has a, what's called a cruise stage with the small five pound safe engines to, to steer it towards Mars and hit a very tight targeted entry point into Mars so we can land where we want. When we get close to Mars, we separate the aeroshell from the cruise vehicle. And the aeroshell has a heat shield, so it enters Mars atmosphere. And then a parachute, the exact same parachute that Mars, that uh, NASA has developed for Mars, and out drops our lander. And using those four Rigel engines, lands on the surface of Mars. So that's what we're that was what that's what I'm up to and wouldn't have been here without my um my Idaho education. Oh, that. that was my presentation and I just want to thank all of the Idaho educators that um that got me to where I am. I'm very grateful and I want to give back. I've been helping University of Idaho. I've been helping LMU. Uh, I've been talking to, to some of the schools in Idaho. I, I want to find uh, kids like me that don't realize their skill sets. And, and, and I want to help them realize that, that, that you, you go get your education and you can achieve uh, great things. Thank you, everybody. Tom, this is, uh, thank you. This was a wonderful presentation and very inspiring. We have time for a couple questions, if that's okay. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, the, the first thing is we have several educators on uh, on the uh, program today, uh, uh, watching today. Um, what would you tell teachers uh, about how important it is for them to inspire students to literally reach for the stars like you did um, with your teachers uh, throughout your life? What would you tell the teachers today that are listening? Well, I think the teachers know because when I, when I told um, Mr. Hines, you know, when I reconnected with him and, and, try, and I thanked him, I said, I got to thank you. And he says, no. He said, I want to thank you. He said, is every teacher's dream that he will change the course of a life of some student? And he goes, and, and to know that I've done that with you is, is the best gift I could have. I, I brought him to, to SpaceX and gave him a tour. And he just passed away, I think, uh, just about a year ago. But um, I gave him a, like, a, some SpaceX swag, a hat. And he wore it all the time. Anytime I talked to him on Zoom or saw him on social media, he was wearing that SpaceX hat. So he was extremely proud. So I think that, um, you know, the thing I would say to teachers is like help students, help help them find their skill. And I think it's extremely rewarding to know that you've helped somebody. I know that I try to help help students. And if I find out that a few times I've heard back, like how I set them on the right path, it's it's just extremely rewarding. It's, it's like the best gift that you can get. Well, we have a lot of students in Idaho, just like you were in rural Idaho, even in cities like Boise yeah. and Coeur d'Alene. Um, what kind of advice do you give the students when you get a chance to talk to them? I just tell them, you know, like you grew up uh, in logging, uh, in mining, in, uh, in farming. You maybe haven't seen what's out there, but maybe you're interested in science. Maybe you're interested in computers. Maybe you're interested in art, who knows, whatever it is, follow your dream. Like I tell them, like I've made some hard decisions in my life. Like I had job offers in Idaho doing things I didn't want to do. There was no rocket development in Idaho. So I moved to California with my, with my, you know, my, my wife and stayed with her mother uh, for three months to trying to find a job in California. It was very difficult, but I followed my dreams and, and it, it paid off. So, that's kind of one of the messages I get. The other thing that I think is really important that I tell anybody that will listen is optimism. Like, why did, what did Elon see in me? What did those, those first interviews they saw in me? They saw an optimist, somebody that had a can-do attitude. And I think that's super important. Like, if, if you don't think you can do it, you won't. You got you to gotta know that you can, and you can achieve more than you think. I think uh, I'm, uh, we have time for, for one more question. I'm going to ask you the question I think everybody listening today wants to know. So what is it like to work with Elon Musk? Very demanding, but I'll say this, the best mentor I've ever had. Um, yeah, I, I just learned so much from him, um, just really how to, how to make it happen. And uh, I, I think just how to get the most out of myself and 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 out of my employees and it's really it's not for everybody um but we felt like we we're the special forces and we were you know we were landing at Norm normandy and conquering new territory so it's like we were ready to do it some people couldn't hang um most of the people that rose to the top there loved it and and and, and just made it happen that's why i always tell people always ask what's the su secret of success of SpaceX and it's really simple, it's the people. It's just dedicated people and how did they get that way? Both their attitude and their education. Well, Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Your story is so inspiring and your vision for the future uh, space exploration is so inspiring as well. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us today and good luck as you shoot for the stars. Thank you, it was great talking, thanks okay. a lot. Take care.